I'm Nick, and I'm here once again to bring you some pro art tips. Thanks to the raging success of my last video with clay and Ruth's last video with pen drawings, we're going to show you how to use a Chinese ink brush set to do some traditional Asian art. So once again, unfortunately, Ruth couldn't make it today, so I'm taking over and I dabbled in the art of Chinese brush painting a little bit. I am no master, but I do consider myself to be somewhat of a pro. So I'm gonna show you a really professional drawing here today. So let's start off by putting some ink onto the paintbrush. And we start by dipping the paintbrush into the inkwell. Uh, we've already pre-ground the ink so that you don't have to watch me grinding ink for 20 minutes. And we're going to go and begin our drawing. We start with a nice gentle stroke, two strokes to make a mountain scene, or perhaps some clouds, we haven't decided yet. Chinese brush painting is a very ephemeral art. It could be anything, very zen. So we go add some more ink, create a bit of a darker stroke. As we continue drawing our little shapes here, could be waves, could be clouds, could be a mountain range, could be a sheep, you never know. So now we continue on adding more of these shapes. Um, very cloudy, very... We continue on with our shapes. Uh, in varying shades of black, we've chosen to stick with just black here, uh, black ink and um, adding now some radiating spikes here. It could be a sunrise or it could be a sea urchin. In Asia, they actually do have a lot of sea urchins um, in the sea, as you can see. And <laughs> we're using the different shades of black, with some lighter shades, some darker, going into a bit of gray here to make um, variations in what could be either an ocean floor scene with a sea urchin or a beautiful sunset scene with a sun setting and clouds and a landscape. So now we're gonna go more towards the top of our canvas here and we're going to draw a thing. We'll let you decide what that thing is. So now we're gonna reload our paintbrush, not in the water pot, which is used for adding more water to the inkwell, but by adding more ink to the paintbrush as you can see, and going back to our canvas here, and another gentle, gentle stroke to make a star shape in the sky. So the stars are coming out. We have the sun setting, we have the stars about to shine, or if you'd like to interpret this in a more zen fashion as an ocean floor, we have starfish hanging out with their sea urchin pal, and adding a bit more to the landscape. We're gonna go back in, get more ink. It's important to keep ink on your brush. Keep inked at all times. There's nothing worse than a dry brush. So going back, add some little birds, maybe some crows flying off into the horizon here, um, or they're flying fish, depending. Again, that's the beauty of art. So you can interpret it however you want. Be your own person, ink your own paper. Now we're heading back to the seafloor slash mountain range, and we're gonna add an ocean uh, to the ocean. So I guess the way I've decided to do this piece all by myself right now is to make this a very pastoral uh, mountain landscape. I've decided to move away from the ocean theme. If you still wanna interpret it as an ocean, hey, that's your journey, I'm not gonna complain. But for me, this is all about the sunset, the mountain range, and what appears to be an ocean. So now I'm gonna add a smoke, some smoke coming up from the sun. The sun is on fire. I guess it makes sense that there'd be smoke um, because the sun's so hot, something's gotta be on fire there. So we're gonna add a little bit of smoke to the sun. Gonna come back over under the clouds. Um, gonna put a Santa? What looks to be Santa Claus flying across the sun. It's Christmas in Australia, I think is what, um, the brush is really guiding me to today is a scene of Christmas in Down Under. So we have Santa Claus flying across the sunset, the stars shining, 
the clouds and the mountains, and it looks like an elf helper has now entered the scene. And we're gonna <laughs> reload our ink brush here. Make sure the paperweight is still in place. We don't want the paper to fly away. Uh, we know Santa's here and it's magical and all, so you never know. We want to clean our hands off when we're, you know, you can get messy when you're making an ink painting, but that's a sign of being an expert here. Uh, so we're going to add a few more stars. These aren't as well defined as the first stars we put in, but these little specks represent the infinite stars in the night sky, as well as the hopes and dreams of all the little children being visited by Santa tonight. So we get more ink. And now, going on to a more advanced technique, I think. This is really tricky. I'm not a pro at this myself. This is something I'm still learning to do, but I'm going to go for it because I want to show you guys the process and give you some inspiration on how to be masters yourselves. So let's dive right in. This is called shading. Um, lots and lots of shading. Uh, it is nighttime, so we want to make sure that the viewer, the person experiencing this piece, knows that it is in fact night. So lots and lots of just black ink everywhere. Uh, if you're into the whole emo goth subculture, this could represent your soul. That's the beauty of black ink. It can represent anything, whether it's Santa or your pitch black soul. So let's uh, maybe switch brushes here to get into some more... <laughs> It needs some more. We'll dual wield brushes at this point. One in each hand. You never know what's gonna happen. Uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna set that one brush aside, and we're gonna start with another brush. This is gonna be used for broader strokes. So, load it up. So we're gonna dabble, dabble, dabble some ink onto that brush. Not paint on the paperweight. Uh, no, that's a big no-no. So you want to go back in and add just a really fantastic black star right in the heart of this piece. Because if you know the Christmas story, the North Star is the guiding star for Santa Claus as he delivers presents. So you want to make that the center of your piece if you have decided to in fact draw Santa in Australia at night delivering presents during a sunset. So we just wanted to give you a close up of the lovely Chinese artwork piece that we created today. And you can see up in the corners, up in the top half of our canvas, the stars of the night sky. Uh, some are more defined. They're the brighter stars of constellations. And the little black dots are the other stars. And you can see the curved shapes, the curvature of the earth, the rolling hills, the beautiful sunset. And he's blended in a bit now. He's disappeared in the course of the night's progress. But Santa Claus was there, in fact, at one point, delivering the presents to the children of Australia. He's now gone back to the North Pole, so you can't really see him anymore. But he's there in spirit. And right in the center is uh, the North Star, done completely in black. Because that was the guiding star for Santa. And we hope that this will be the guiding star for you and your art career. So... That is that. We have created just this wonderful, heartfelt piece that blends Zen concepts from the Far East and Christmas traditions of the whole world. And this is, again, very advanced Chinese art techniques, but we hope you get a basic idea, a basic understanding that you can take home with you and try this for yourself. So thank you once again for joining me for another installation of uh, mine and Ruth's, even though it's just me here today, art series on advanced artistic techniques for beginners. We thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>
And now we're gonna take, and it's really hard to get out of the thing, um, a piece of white chalk, which is very good to start with <laughs> since it's on white paper. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna shade a little white on the white paper. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's, it's very good shading um, with white. Now we're gonna pick up a light green and we're going to use the top part of it and create some squiggles, which represents grass. That or like a field. I like when my fields are green. Um, add some like weeds there, some little ungrown pieces of uh, stuff there. Um, yep, that was the green. And now we're going to use a gray to make it more mysterious. So we're gonna get this closer because my little stuffy. Oh yes, and we're gonna add some clouds, some beautiful um, uh, little clouds here. It looks like it's about to rain. Um, that is, or it's just overcast. Um, not really sure what I want to do. So we're gonna take this red one, and we're going to let's see. Ah oh, yes, make triangles in the sky. I don't know if you know, but triangles are my favorite shape. Um, I'm gonna take the green again. And no, we're just kidding. Um, I, I, I put too much green. See, I want a variation of color. So I'm gonna take, um, I can kind of get it, this teal blue. And we are going to use the top and put it right on top of the clouds. Um, no, maybe one below. And then we're just gonna make little circles. Or maybe one circle. Oh, we're making, um, oh, what are they called? Little Miss Sunshine characters. <laughs> I think this one's like, like sad or something. Um, I'm gonna take the red again, and I'm going to, let's see, mm -hmm. this is tough. I'm gonna put it up to the left side and uh, hmm, make a, oh, oh, a floating double reindeer. Yes, <laughs> I like that a lot. Um, gotta add some good and bad here. Take the green again, just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> April Fools, guys, this is so funny. We're gonna take the blue again, and we're gonna, <laughs> just kidding. Um, we're gonna take the pink, because pink is pretty. And let's see, what are we gonna do on the right side? We're going to make another little oval. Oh, a butterfly! There we go, perfect. That has the antennas. Um, let's see. Gonna, oh, 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 we gotta make it poops. Off of the twing. Either that or it's dandruff. Um, I'm gonna take the pink again. <laughs> Oh, see, it was my favorite color until I realized it was pink again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the white. <laughs> Make a question mark because the butterfly is very confused, and so would I be in this in this situation. We're gonna take, take the pink again. We're gonna we're gonna make a huge shoe for the devil reindeer. Um, let's see what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take the lighter blue of all the blues. Um, let's see. And what else we're gonna do? Hmm, la I'm not really sure. Oh, here we go. We're gonna make um, little music notes in the clouds. Um, see, this is a musical um, butterfly. Uh, now we're gonna take this really like brick kind of red ish. Oh, it broke. Whoops. Oh, we can just put that up. No big deal. Uh, we're gonna make a tombstone in the sky with. Um, oh no, it's a. Oh wait, I'm, I changed my mind. Yeah, we're gonna switch back to my original idea. It's gonna be a mushroom um, on top of the devil reindeer. Um, no, there's nothing in there. I'm gonna take the same color again. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just kidding. Um, we're gonna take the red again, and let's see. Uh, I decided not. I'm gonna fling that off the. <laughs> so we don't want to keep using the same colors again. Um, we're gonna, now we're going to take the purple, add some um, on my hand. See, this is where we get into the technique. Um, I'm going to stick my whole hand on here and just mix all the colors around. See, this is like a psychedelic dream, so we don't want to be so like pristine and clear with this picture. We want to make it nice and mysterious. So we're going to take the purple again. We're going to make um, these huge bat vampire things on top of the mushroom that's sitting on top of the whole reindeer. And um, we're gonna make another one um, attacking the butterfly, unfortunately, because it hates music. So it's gonna eat the butterfly. And let's see, we're gonna take, um, hmm, it's a really tough 
stuff. He needs long fingernails, which I do not have. We're gonna take this um, peachy yellow color um, and we're going to color. Oh, we're gonna, oh, I get it. We're gonna stab the, <laughs> the bat in its armpit um, <laughs> with the sword. Um, Cause the little sunshine character. Um, let's see. You know what, the, the other bat has a lot to say, um, so we wrote a big word right on his face. <laughs> but we can't tell because remember, this is a dream, so we can't see exactly everything. I take this really dark blue, and let's see, we're gonna go into the grass and make... Let's see... We're gonna make a detached um, um, dinosaur. Um, let's see, it's a, his legs are kind of just walking by himself. And um, it's, its arms are obviously to the side. We're gonna take that dark brick color again, right on top of the brick colored mushroom, and we're gonna make a check mark. Um, um, and then the bat is singing this famous mushroom song. We're gonna take the blue again, and we're going to. Um, oh, so see the Little Miss Sunshine um, character standing on top of a vacuum cleaner with eyes. <laughs> and I know it's, it's, it's crazy. I know you guys need to deal with it. <laughs> um, but that's what he's standing on. So now we're going to take a brown color and just let's see. We're going to play with it in my hand a little bit because I don't know what I want to do. Decisions, decisions. Oh, here we go. Little Miss Sunshine is, is holding a piece of poop. And. <laughs> Um, because it, that's like your secret, secret weapon is grossness. And we're gonna add some um, spikes and or, let's see, legs to the poop. And, and actually, no, I'm changing it into um, a badger with spikes. Or a mole or a beaver. It, they're all part of the same family, so. Um, so yes, that's like his uh, sidekick. Um, so we're gonna take the gray and make a pine tree on top of the dinosaur because the dinosaur is trying to hide from all this combobulation here. Um, and it's gray too, so it helps out with the blue and all my So I'm gonna put all these back. Um, it's hard to put them back into their like original spots because you know, like it's so hard to get them out, so hard to put them back in. So this is what I uh, came up with. And um, as you can see, there is um, the poop with spikes. Um, the Little Miss Sunshine character with a sword poking it inside of a bat armpit. Um, you can see the mushroom um, and on top of the uh, double reindeer. See the dinosaur in the background all detached with the gray tree in front of it. And there's just the butterfly getting demolished and music notes and um, all that stuff. This is possibly a dream, so you don't really know exactly what they are unless you really take a good look at it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you like what you see here, make sure to comment to like and, just, and um, describe too, <laughs> but subscribe. And if you want to see Nick again, um, make sure you comment in the comment section and like and subscribe. If you've seen him around, let him know that I, I miss him. Um, yeah. But anyway, thanks you again uh, very much for watching and I hope to see you ne next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>